start focusing on what you want to go for, not on what you're not of where you were or where you are. I don't want this headache becomes I want a clear head. I don't want this backache becomes I want a strong back. I don't want these bills becomes I want more than enough money for everything I desire. I don't want to struggle in my business becomes I want business to come to me easily and effortlessly. There's an art of rewriting what you don't want in a way of what you do want. All I do and all I do is write the opposite of my complaint. Turn the senses around in 180 degrees and if I say I'm tired of being interrupted when I write, the opposite would be is I want to write in a place that is safe, quiet and without interruption. You're probably wondering what it has to do with any of anything. You're probably wondering what this has to do with anything. Why write these sentences down if they won't help you pay the bills or heal your problems or anything else? Good question. The answer, refocusing on what you want will take you in a direction of what you want. As Deepak Chopper wrote in his book, The Spontaneous Fulfillment of Desire, all we really need is clarity of intent. Then we go with the ego out of the way and the intentions fulfill themselves. The magic of intention. My friend Kent Cummings, master, magician, great speaker and co-author of The Magic of Change, knows about the power of the intention in business. He ran a sandwich shop business, a sandwich shops in Austin, Texas for 15 years. One day he decided to run a radio of offering free beans with a pole boy encouraging customers to purchase the larger size sandwich. Don't ask him why he thought the beans would be a draw. All they remembers is the business he had found a source of some very tasty beans. They stocked up on beans. They placed an ad with a popular local radio station in the day of sandwich shop open for business. There were so many customers he had to turn some away. Business exploded. He couldn't keep up with the orders. There is the odd thing. He can't call the radio station and thank them for running his ad. And he was shocked to hear that we were going to call you and apologize that we never ran your ad. How did Kent get, get so much free business on ad that they never ran? It's all about your intentions. He told me over dinner and intended of a new business. And the signal was he attracted people. Apparently, an intention was more important than the actual ad. That's not the only time Kent had experienced the power of knowing what to do in business. Recently, he decided to implement a publicity campaign for his summer camp, the Kent Cummings Magic Camp. He read in books, attended seminars, drafted a plan. His intent was to go public, public, pub, was to get publicity. But he got busy with operational details, and he never actually implemented the plan, and he forgot to do it. It didn't even matter. One of the former camper parents turned out to be a writer for the Austin American Statements newspaper, and he called to Kent and asked permission to write on the opening piece for an editorial page. Stunning response and stunning story about the council training program. Within weeks of the idea, one of the local TV stations called up and asked Kent to appear on the morning show to promote the camp of an interesting idea for the new viewers. Kent appeared and demonstrated some of the magic and answered questions about the camp. Kent then discovered the big magic camp had been nominated for recognizing of a big Austin City sponsorship nonprofit organization for small businesses. To his surprise, he won the most creative small business in Austin 2004, recognized and included some $4,000 worth in prizes. The Business Success Center had already asked him to speak on an entrepreneurship. He would ask the Lakeway Breakfast Club to ask in the camp of Austin Family Magazines, notified him in a magic camp that he had been designated to read the poll and reader's poll of the best specialty camp in Austin. Finally, Kent discovered that one of his councils had set up a magic tricks for the camp to the Tonight Show and Jay Leno and used the piece to pay it of a camper of $100. Not bad results for a publicity campaign that was never implemented. Kent calls it the magic of intention. As you'll see throughout this book, it's clearer and clearer how you want and what you want. It's easier to simply attract it into your life. For example, how I raised $22,500 in one day. One day I pulled up beside a delivering new cars and the cars of flatbed made up my head of a blood dance in which a never piece of machinery turned me to before. I never had a piece of machinery turn me on before as this one did and I fell in love. It was the BMW Z3, a roadster, luxury sports car, one of the sexiest cars of man made by gods. Okay, maybe I'm overplaying it, but the point is that the car spoke to me and I wanted it and I wanted it bad. I also knew BMWs are privacy, so the first thing I did was try to win one. I entered two contests where Z3s were being big prizes. I knew I would win, and I was destined to have that car, but I didn't win. A loss. It was so much for the laws of chance, so much of time to create in my future by attracting it. So I decided that I would buy the car, and I would pay cash for it, and I would complete an e-book on how to create miracles and called spiritual marketing, and I figured that I would prove myself that I could create a Z3, and I used my own five-step method for getting the sexiest car in my hottest dreams. I began by setting an intention of getting this car. Hopper once said, the intentions rules the earth. Intentions rules the earth. And I know it. My car's license plate holder says, I am the power of intentions. And once you declare something to be so, you send the signal to the universe that begins to move into something towards you. And you moves you and you to it. Call it real magic. Call it the attractive factor. I call it one of the most powerful steps in the manifestation, manifestation, manifestation process. From step one, from this step alone, miracles can happen. After I set my intention to have that car, I then acted on the hunches bubbled up within me and my opportunities that came my way. To be more exact, here's what happened. 
One day it occurred to me it offered a seminar subject to my new book. I could rent a hotel, write sales letters, and invite everyone that I knew online or offline to list to do it. And it could make a killing on one weekend, and that's the ticket. But when it occurred to me that I didn't market seminars, I don't know how to do it or how it would sell, the postage and printing and promote one of my cost fortunes, I'm not going to be a, such a big fan of speaking in a public anyway. And here's where the shift occurred. I began to play an idea that I could hold a seminar online. I would simply announce an e-class to my email list, and it would cost me zip. If no one signed up, so what? But, 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 if they did sign up, it could teach me the entire class by email every week and send out a lesson that would give me assignments and I would complete them and email, write, email them back. And I would comment on their homework. It would also be nice and neat, easy and convenient, sounded good to me. I decided to teach five-week classes, mainly because there was five chapters in my original book. And I would send one chapter week class lesson. And I would also do assignments on each one to make more of the legit course. Then I wondered, what do I charge? I spent a lot of time on this question, what people would give on their e-classes to teach them all. I would charge low fees, but I wanted my BMW Z3 that cost $30,000, $40,000 each. Yikes. Well, I decided I wanted 15 people in my class, and that's with arbitrary number. I figured if 15 actually did their homework over a five-week period, I would have hands of reviewing it so everything else is developed in the first E-class. I simply made up the class size and then divided 15 from which... I wanted to raise for my Z3, and if people paid me $2,000 each, I wouldn't have enough to pay for the car in cash. Two grand person seemed to be a big hit, so I settled it for $1,500 a person. I then issued a sales pitch invitation to sign up for the class. To my email list, I had about 800 good names in a list at a time. I had no idea if anyone would bite. I even feared I would be flamed to death. But I decided to take the risk and then sent the letter onto my list. And what happened? 16 of them immediately signed up for the class. Talk about easy money. I made $24,000 in one day. This class was so easy to do. The students loved the lessons, my assignments, and my feedback. Only one person immediately asked to bow out, saying that the e-class wasn't for him. So I ended up with 15 people after all. I made $22,500, and I was happy. But I didn't even stop there. A few weeks later, I announced another e-class. This one was to write, publish, and promote your own e-book. And I followed on the same model, and everyone worked and I invited an email list and went after 15 people I charged $1,500 per person for a five week course paying 12 paying customers I made $18,000 at this point I've been thinking about writing a sequel to my best selling ebook hypnotic writing and I didn't want to write it just in hopes that it would sell I wanted to get paid to write it I wanted I wanted paid to write it. So, I created yet another e-class this one was to be an advanced hypnotic writing it was three weeks long rather than five because I wanted to take it to take it easy on this time around and I didn't want people. I was getting lazy. I still charged 1500 and still went about 15 people. And I announced the class to my email list. Now, here's something wild. And something here had wild had happened. Almost 18 people immediately signed up for the class. But when I asked them to pay $1,500 each, every single one of them said that they thought the class was free. And I s stunned. I regretted my invite. I reread my invite and it clearly said that there was a hefty fee. All I could figure out is that people skimmed the letter, got excited, and just shot back emails and enrolled to the class. Or maybe they read the words fee as free. Go figure. But that's not the only odd thing that happened with this class. I also had trouble filling in my own e-list, so I went and asked a person of a giant email list who could promote my class to his people. He wrote for 50% of the pie. Yowza! He, w he would for 50% of the pie. And that was a lot. I wanted to get paid to write my sequel to hypnotic writing. I'll still loan that with the good money anyway, so I agreed. Well, 20 people signed up, and really the odd thing was is that no one, no one did their assignments. So I got their money, half of it anyways, $15,000, and I got paid to write my own advanced hypnotic writing ebook. And I had homework to review for grade. What a cool business. Most recently, I announced yet another e-class. I was about to buy a large country estate and wanted more money for fast. This new class is on my new property propriety marketing for formula called guaranteed outcome marketing I raised the price to the five week e-class signal its value I class of $2,500 a person since I normally charge $50,000 to create a guaranteed outcome marketing strategy for someone asking for only $2,500 to teach them how to do it seemed very fair I lowered the class size because I wanted to sure give each student personal attention I promoted this class to only my e-list which I got five students which meant I raised $12,500 not bad for a month's work and yes I bought the country estate I'm writing this section from it I went on and taught my method for teaching classes. My only email several people, co-writing and copywriting the internet marketing, Yannick Silver, has made over $90,000. Executive coach Paul Lindbergh has made over $100,000. And Tom Pauly, author of I'm Rich Beyond My Wildest Dreams, I Am, I Am, I Am, I Am, has made over $250,000 so far. And it's nearly in each made up of 50% of what they made for helping to promote their own e-classes online. And all of this began because and because I've implemented a two-step the attractor factor method. 
the moral here, there are several. Number one, intention rules. You can float with circumstances life brings you, or you can create your own direction, your own circumstances, and it begins with a decision. What you want. Decide. Choose. Declare. My motto is, dare something worthy. This is the power of step two in the attractor factor formula. Number two, break the model. Just because others are selling their services for song doesn't mean that you have to as well. Respect yourself and what you're worth. Number three, go for something other than money. Winning my Z3 caused my mind to stretch in ways that I raised the money needed to get the car. It was just about getting after the money, the money's sake. I might not think so boldly in my ideas or my pricing, but what do you really want? Number four, you could do this too. Just look at what you know and how others can pay and learn. Just look at what you know and how others would pay to learn. Then turn this into an e-class, complete with lessons and assignments. After the class is over, you might even compile the material into a book or a tape or a set or think big. What would you like to teach? You add no other fears. You can attract wealth from your fearlessness or the wealth of hiding right behind the very thing from which you are reluctant to do. The spiritual is not separate from the material. Number five, the spiritual is not separate from the material. And since I focused on my money on this example, it's easy to declare my focus of what was only on the dollar. Not so. I use spiritual principles. It was explaining of this very book to attract wealth once you realize the spiritual material are two sides of the same coin. You are free of happiness as well as cash. There's also in a dollar bill in your pocket. In God we trust. Do you trust? Finally, yes. I attracted my BMW Z3 into my garage. It brought me off of the showroom floor in 1999 Montreal. Blue stunning piece of rolling beauty. Since BMW no longer makes the model, it's also collectible too. I've had it for years now and I've never had so much fun in my life driving. In fact, I think I'll aim it up and at some... I think it'll aim it up on some Texas country roads right now. The number one thing people do wrong, I admit it, is I'm frustrated, I'm tired of getting emails from people who write, I can't do what you do because, or I can't attract wealth into my life because, just fill the blank with whatever you excuse you can think of. Just, people say that they can't write as many books or they've, because they don't have the time or they're too old or they're too young, too married, too single. People say that they can't make their best booksellers their bestseller. I did because their book is different or they're different and their timing is different. People say they can't ask celebrities for endorsements as they did because they feel insignificant or insulting or imposing. The list of excuses is endless. Here's an actual ones that I've received. You're more famous than me. I can never write people and ask them for help as they would give me at the time of the day. I started asking people for help, advice, suggestions, and direction when I was a teenager. I have letters from FBI, King J. Edgar Hoover, boxing legend Jack Dempsey, master magician John Muhammad, and I certainly unknown them. Yet people have always helped me. I managed to connect with Evil Knievel, Donald Trump, Jimmy Carter, best-selling authors, and more. I didn't know anyone before they knew my name. Simply ask for their help. They were the kinder enough to reply one day, and I'm doing the same thing for anyone else who writes me and sounds sincere and respectful. You have a large network of people to ask for things. Yes, I do now, but I didn't when I first started. Developing my network by building relationships, I reached out to people and helped them. They've helped me. The trust was formed, and because I've nurtured my relationships online almost 10 years now, a bond is set. When I announced that I want contributions for a new book, my network responses when they want something, I respond. I was able to compile an information from my most recent book, The E-Code, 47 Surprising Secrets of Marketing of Making Money Online Almost Instantly in Less Than 7 Days, all because I asked my network for help. You have a big mailing list, so you could sell things faster. I went online with no mailing list, none. I didn't even reorganize the importance of having my own list until one day I offered my e-class for the tiny list of May $22,500 in one day. And then I woke up, and I've been working and building my email list ever since. Anyone can do it. If you're waiting to do it, you can also joint venture with people who already have mailing lists now. How? Just ask. One day. Some people normally wrote me. I wanted to know if I would, if you would help me sell his new software. I like this program and agreed. He didn't have a list. I did. He had a software. I liked it. I did mailing a split of profits with him, and it was a win-win. You are more talented as a copywriter, so you sell the better than me. I learned to be a copywriter by investing time, money, and effort by studying the greats and getting into what's doing fast. My first sales letters was garbage. I still write and rewrite to make my letters as hypnotic as I can. I wasn't born writing, reading, or even walking. I learned it all. Can't you? I don't have anything to offer free to people to get to buy what I'm selling. There's a million things for free online. You can find thousands and thousands of free e-books online. Just grab a few and some of them incentives to get people to buy your product or service. Anyone can do this. Just look around online. The fruit is there for the picking. I've seen around online the fruit is there, and I've seen people take classes for literature, now in a public domain and available as e-books. They offer them as incentives for prospects to buy their products and it works. How do you find them? Search. I can't teach an e-class like you because I have no credentials. Your credentials are you. They are your life experiences more than anything else. A few day care, a few today care about whether or not they have the degree or any credentials. 
They care if you can deliver whatever you promise. My life mate, Narissa, about to teach the online video editing class. Anything can teach and offline can be taught online. With video, audio, graphics, text, and chat rooms, you can have a virtual classroom on anything that you can imagine. Why not?